Welcome to Health and Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Today we're talking about overuse injuries and sports-related injuries, particularly those affecting kids, teenagers, and young girls. And joining us today is expert, co-owner of Excel Orthopedic Rehabilitation, Matt Gibble. You're also a physical therapist and a triathlete, and you know all there is to know about this kind of stuff. So thanks for having us here, Matt. Thank you for having me. We've heard a lot recently about the skyrocketing rates of overuse injuries, um, particularly in kids, probably because they're not doing multiple sports, they're really focusing on one. How much of that do you see? Uh, we see it on a, every day on a continuous basis. On a cellular level, when you're using the same muscles and the same ligaments, they, be, they get stressed and strained. And when they get stressed and strained over a prolonged period, something happens called they develop ischemia and ischemia means they're not getting enough blood flow to the area and that's when you start having tendonitis or um, avulsion muscle kind of uh, problems with the ligaments attached to the bones. How can you tell if that is occurring like you say on a cellular level before you wind up unable to move that body part? Usually they'll start developing pain or inflammation and um, that's the first red flag so once the athlete gets pain in an area they'll usually go see a physician get an x-ray which is always smart or have further diagnostic tests let's talk a little bit about ACL injuries especially with girls structurally women are um, shaped differently than boys they in general have uh, wider hips more knock need uh, positioning of the knees more internal femoral torsion or internally rotated hips and from a biomechanical perspective, that's one of the main reasons why they're at risk. It has become more of an ec epidemic for us. Um, and I've been a physical therapist for 25 years. Our gym is full of girls in the evenings with ACL injuries. There's over this job, 200,000 ACL injuries per year, and girls are up to five to eight times more common than boys to oh, have this good. injury. So Kate, you're a soccer player. You've hurt both your knees, two ACL repairs. Mm -hmm. How did you do the first one? The first one, I cut on it wrong, and then it tore. So no contact? Right. No one hit you? And how long did it take you to get over that injury and that surgery? Six months. Six months. About. And then you hurt your other ACL, mm -hmm. and that was with contact, right? Right. And so you've had back-to-back -back ACL repairs. You're almost bionic, and you're only, <laughs> what, 17? Now let's say they do sustain an ACL injury. I've read conflicting reports. Some people say you can be rehabilitated in six months. Some people say a year. What do you tell your clients and patients? Uh, most girls are back on the field in around six months. Um, the great thing, you know, 25 years ago, it was a year. What's the standard kind of rehabilitation process like? Well, in, in the office here, it's three days a week. However, every girl, every athlete has a home exercise program. So it's, it really is a seven day a week commitment and you know the physical therapy here can be anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. You get used to going to practice every single day when you're before your injury. Practice like maybe two or three practices a day and workouts and liftings and this is like basically what it's become because you make friends with everybody who's here and like they're not only your physical therapist, they're like your coaches. Not only do you have to approach it on a physiologic level with whatever muscle or tendon is involved, but also with athletes on a psychological level by keeping them active yeah. or busy doing other things. That's so, so much a part of this whole process. Exactly. I mean, physically, if you do the rehab and work hard, you get back on the field, but the mental aspect to keep coming and work as hard as you can every second you're here, um, and to really push through and know that you can get back to where you were before is probably the hardest part. My love for the game helped me to overcome it because I know I, that's what I want to do with my life. I want to play soccer. Are you starting to see parents bringing their kids in here preventatively? They're, unfortunately, they are waiting, and I wish people did think in a more preventive kind of sense just because um, there are a lot of girls who are at risk. So we can watch how they jump and land. We can watch how they run. We can just do a postural assessment to see you know, how their knees come together or, or, or go straight. We can do a lot of things to evaluate them. A lot of girls, I think, once they go through this process, I mean, it's sort of a tough thing. I think they come out stronger, if not physically, because we do try to make them stronger than they were before. And we do work on their biomechanics and how they land, how they jump, how they run. But I think mentally they come out a little bit tougher than they did before they had their surgery. So we want to thank Matt Gibble uh, and everyone here at Excel in New Jersey. And thank you for watching another episode of Health and Wellness. Until next time, I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton wishing you good health.